before we do any of the general approach to basic just drawings, I'm going to go over the tools that we use, and I call these the tools for your toolbox, or the tools box. And these are just tools so that you can modify them to your liking, to match your own style. But they are very general principles that we, uh, as, as your students, would use when you're just drawing so you'll know where to pull your lines from. Because when you're looking at these gestures that I'm going to be doing, they're going to look like spaghetti people to you. And they're not spaghettis. They have generals that you should follow. And then when you're comfortable with the rules, you can bend them and put them to your liking. The first tool we'll look at is the spine. Now, the spine has three sections. The cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar. Why are these important when we're looking at the spine of the human figure? Well, they follow a simple pattern, an S pattern. So, the spine is an S. And we see this S curvature throughout the whole entire body. So, let's say you had a leg. This is a leg here. And the leg follows an S pattern. Right? This is a leg from the side. The, the torso area also follow an S because naturally the spine is an S. Well, if you're when you're doing your gestures, you can all if you're if you're having if you're stuck, you don't know where to pull your lines from. You can always refer reference back to the spine. So this here in blue is the cervical section. This is where the neck will be. So this is your head here, and you have your neck. You pull your you pull a line to the neck, like so. And I'll go ahead and just put a shoulder thing right here. And I'll wrap that around for the neck here. As you know, the neck is goes up from the from where the torso is, see the back is higher than the front here. Anyway, so that will be your neck. The spine area, right here. The next is the thoracic area, and that houses the torso. This torso. So your torso is a an oval shape, like 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 this. It's not completely oval, but for the purposes of studying, the best way to simplify the torso would be in such a shape. And you have the sternum. And the sternum is a sort of like a sword shape. It is a sword shape. This would be the manubrium right here if we were to look at a skeleton. And the sternum would be like a like a sword. So you can think of the sternum and the manubrium and the pit of the neck as a sword. So uh, this is the sword here. This I'm just going this general thing over. It's not necessary that I'm defining this for the gesture, but I, I need to define it so that you will know what areas the spine we're looking at here. So this it can be thought of as a sword. Sternum. And the sternum is one head length. So one head length. One head. And this goes right here. And there will be landmarks right here in this area of the thoracic area. 
So then you have your neck, the cervical, the thoracic, so the spine will come out, and it makes its way into the lumbar area. And the lumbar area pushes out like so, so it creates, uh, finishes the S that we have here. This is the S curve of the spine, and it comes out from here into the sacrum, which leads into the torso, like this, into the pubic arch, and the pieces, or the posterior iliac spine, which is right here. Anyway, that's a little too redundant, but just to make a general point that this S-curve is what you'll be using for your gesture, so this comes out here. So if you're this here, if this were a gesture of the figure, and then coming out, let's say I want to push the, the pose, or I want to leave the eye of a figure, I will create a series of repeating lines. We'll get to the repeating lines in just a very, very shortly. And then say I want to push the belly out a little bit more, so I'll push the belly out like this, I'll make a rapid line, and, and uh, I'll push straight here. I'll define where the weight is by drawing a plumb line to where the nose would be located, and put a straight for where the weight-bearing leg is, and the, the free-flowing leg will be out here, and I will put lines out here for where the, the this is, is the, uh, this line would be, where the pit of the neck is would be the cranium, uh, not the cranium, the, uh, clavicle. And the clavicles will be out right here, and you, you get the point. Hopefully you get the point. So this is how you follow the, the gesture of the spine. This is an Nice one S curve from here comes into here, moves out like a giant, one giant S throughout the body. So the S of the spine can be thought of as a tool so that you can see the flow throughout the whole body. If you don't know where to put your lines, if you're stuck, you say, oh, I drew a line here, and then I, I made a line here, and I don't know where to go. I don't know where to pull my line. You can always reference back to the spine as, as an aid. It's just a tool. You don't have to use it. And this is general. these are general purposes, but for all, tent for all study purposes, this is how we're going to be doing gestures. This is one tool. For the first tool is the spine. In the next video, we will discuss asymmetry and how that is used to complement the spine.